So it's Friday today, which means, of course, another drinking video. I know, and I've got my beer, and like we've been here for the last couple of weeks, you found something stupid for me to open it with, but first the intro. It's established in the Harry Potter universe that the only spell capable of warding off a Dementor, an unfeeling, unkillable, like avatar of death and destruction capable of mind-fucking you into mental oblivion, is the Patronus Charm. Contrary to what you might expect though, according to in-universe law, the size of a Patronus has no bearing on its power or effectiveness. Because, oh fuck's sake, we're gonna make the size doesn't matter joke, aren't we? There's, because size doesn't matter. Right, so I've already had a couple of beers, but for camera purposes, what have you got me to open this one? Well, uh, this week I've gone for, uh, once again, something I imagine you can do it with, okay. but it's more just for the fun of doing it. Okay. I've got your pair of 3D glasses. 3D glasses, go! Yeah. yeah, that's a catch, right. 3D glasses, beer, as usual. No camera trickery involved, just one man who really wants his fucking beer. Oh god, these are a bit flimsy. Yeah, they're probably going to break. Well, these are flimsy as shit. You've done oh, me. Oh, you might, a challenge. You might have done me here, mate. Oh, for fuck's sake. Right, let's get, let's get a solid surface as my knee. There we go. Fuck yeah. Right, so now I've got some glasses. You're going to do a Horatio Kane for me here. Okay. But I'm really glad that I didn't bottle that attempt. <laughs> So we've seen them in the films, mm -hmm. and I assume 90% of everyone has read about them in the books. Yes. But what are Dementors really? They are creatures of pure instincts that are immortal, unkillable, and feed on the emotions of human beings. There's no real like backstory to where they come from. I think there was a passage in one of the books that got cut out in editing, where like Rowling said they are, they just appear naturally in areas that are naturally decayed and um, uh, are like attuned to evil. So like, well, was... like manifestations of yeah. evil. She described them as like a sort of like fungus or a parasite that just appears in areas where evil has occurred. But that was cut out. So we don't really know what the fuck they are. All we do know is that they are terrifying as all balls because they are functionally immortal, basically unkillable, superhumanly strong with the ability to fly and like, most dangerously, suck your soul out through your mouth, which leaves you as an unfeeling husk, capable of doing nothing but sit and silently shit yourself in fear. They must be sentient in at least some capacity, because they're used as guards for the as like for Azkaban, the prison, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, it's supposed like a mutually beneficial relationship where, like, you know, the Dementors can't really be controlled, but they can be coerced to do your bidding. Like, oh yeah, if you fly around here, there's, like, people inside who are just like, you know, like wretched husks of humanity who you can just like, you know, suck out all their hope. And if as long as you do that and don't fly off onto the mainland, we cool. And I'm just gonna put it out there, Azkaban is the worst fictional prison ever devised. And it's in a fucking children's book. We've mentioned before about how no one innocent should ever go there. No, think here is though. People who've committed crimes shouldn't go there. <laughs> because like in the wizard universe, you've got all this cool magical shit. And you like you've got the abilities like regrow arms and all that bullshit. They've got no ability to like like heal people's minds. Yeah. It's established multiple times that while you can heal the body, you cannot heal the minds. So that's what happens like the Cruciatus curse. And that's why Neville's parents are basically just like like completely mentally like deranged. Because they were tortured to the point where they basically went insane and they can't fix that with magic. And what do they do in their prison system? <laughs> A island in the middle of bumfuck nowhere, surrounded by demonic creatures that suck out every positive emotion. How is that going to re, like, you know, reform a criminal? I mean, if anything, it's a deterrent. Well, it's a deterrent, yes, but the people who go there always come out insane. Look at Bellatrix Lestrange. Oh, God, yeah. Every single description of her in the books like, is always like, you could tell she used to be a great beauty, but now her face is just like scarred by insanity because she was in like Azkaban and just the Dementors made her go insane. It's like, all you're doing is just creating more dangerous criminals. And we've already talked about the fact, like, in that universe as well, how the fuck do innocent people get sent down? Like, we said, what, Sirius Black gets sent to prison in a universe where truth serum exists and works and also they have the ability to read people's minds and if that doesn't work, pull out your memories and then watch them on a fucking, t like, a TV screen, basically. In the Wizard Universe, like, I always say, oh yeah, humans just wouldn't understand. It's like, well, you know what we've got? 
prisons where we don't like, you know, just obliterate people's minds to the point they become blithering idiots who does that it can do nothing but like cause mayhem and destruction when they get out. Wizards are elitist assholes. This is known. Like, think about it, like, they always talk a mad amount of shit about humans, but like, the muggles being backwards, and they still communicate via owl. <laughs> also, as well, I think a plot point in every other book is like, oh, the owl male keeps getting tampered with, because Harry keeps finding Hedwig with its feathers ruffled, means someone, like, molested his owl. So we get a bit off topic. I know, I don't know why. No, no, no mystery, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It'll never be explained. Anyway, continue. Yes, back to Dementors. Mm -hmm. So we know from the books and the films mm -hmm. that the Patronus charm is something that can stop a Dementor. Yeah, apparently it's the only way to stop them. It's the only thing they fear, other than like, it's like basically doing what Sirius did and just holding on to a singular happy memory that they can't take away from you. But yeah, the Patronus charm is basically the only way to like, you know, ward off or even like, you know, harm or scare a Dementor. And for people who haven't read the books or seen the films, the Patronus Charm basically involves firing a concentrated stream of happiness at the end of your wand. Yeah, like, the, the penis Joe writes itself, does it? Yeah, grip the shaft of your firm piece of wood and think about your, like, you know, your happiest memory and just let an explosion of good times just, like, you know, ward off the heap. Just fire your silvery goo out of the end of your wand. <laughs> It's like, if he is though, we've got to mention it, the edits of Harry Potter, where they replace wand with penis. Right, it has to be mentioned, like, Harry examined his penis, he was 11 and 3 quarter inches. <laughs> I, I, I maintain that that is much better if instead of penis you say willy. Because there's willy. bits where, like, Snape whips out his willy and points it at Harry. No, I think the less offensive or, like, the more innocent the term you use is the funniest. So I'm going to say todger. <laughs> just... just <laughs> Because Harry whipped out his dodger and pointed it at the Dementors. You know what? I feel that we're marching towards the territory right now what of? of slang words for penises. Slang words. Okay. I don't think we've covered this topic. Okay, go on. What's your, right, go on. Throw a few out there for me. So I'm going to start off with a mutton dagger. Mutton dagger. <laughs> what the fuck is that? I, I know a song that's full of these, so I've got oh, loads. Right. I was going to start with, obviously, todger or yeah. tidge. Tidge. Tidge is what I've heard. Go on. What about Purple Helmet Warrior? Oh, you're just going for all the silly ones. <laughs> do, you want, do you want basic slang? Yeah, go like on. Like wang. Wang, schlong. Weenie. Dong. <laughs> Cock. Dick. Tallywhacker. Damn it, Tallywhacker, you got me there. So the Patronus charm uh -huh. is, well, for most wizards, will come out as like a big gooey spray of silver shit. Yep, that rolling herself couldn't have written better. But if you're a particularly skilled wizard, you can make it take the form of something. Yes, um, like if you are skilled and you cast a Patronus charm, it will take corporeal form. Like the shape of which, like witches and wizards are supposedly have like, you know, marginal control over. Because there are like numerous illusions in the books, like some people change the form of their Patronus. And it has to happen after like either like a great loss or sorrow or just like, you know, a change in your life. So I think like Nymphadora changes hers to like a wolf after, you know, spoilers, Lupin dies. And then Snape takes the form of a doe in reference to Lily because he loves her so much. But for the most part, you don't get to control what your Patronus takes the form of unless like, you know, have someone close to you die or to try really, really hard. And like it can range from like, you know, a dog or a cat to even like a fish. And I'm now thinking, like, imagine being that kid. Like, Joe in, like, you know, Dumbledore's army, when that scene where you see him on, you see, like, oh, yeah, there's Luna, she's got like, a little rabbit running around and all that bullshit. And then, like, you like, like um, I think Ron gets a dog. Imagine being the kid who gets the fish. You're like, what fucking use is this? You good for nothing, fish. <laughs> The thing is, though, even though Harry Potter lore states explicitly that the shape, form, and size of Patronus has no bearing on its power or effect, there are still, like, rare Patronuses out there. It's like, Joe, like, in a video, like, basically like a video game, where it's like, oh, what did you get when you, like, got your Patronus? Oh, I got a, a dog. Oh, that's a common. What did you get? Oh, I got a weasel. Oh, that's a rare. And then that like, Dumbledore walks in. What did you get, mate? Oh, I got a phoenix. You got a legendary. legendary. You, 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 you rolled a phoenix on your first turn, mate. <laughs> Holy shit! And there's apparently there's a guy in like Harry Potter oh, who had a woolly mammoth, oh. and he's the only person in known history who got an animal that's extinct. And I like to think there's someone out there as a kid in that Harry Potter universe who's just getting his letter to Hogwarts, and one day he's destined to get a fucking dinosaur. Ooh. He's gonna rock up 
on the first day of Hogwarts, do the Patronus charm and summon out the fucking Dragon Sword from Power Rangers. So the form, the size, or the shape of a Patronus actually has no bearing on how powerful it is. No, none whatsoever. And we know this because it's established in Harry Potter universe lore that the most powerful Patronus ever cast took the form of a mouse. Yeah, that's pretty cool as well, isn't it? a little mouse. But anyway, it was cast by apparently a young wizard called Ilias when a dark wizard was attacking his village and everyone in the village like running around, like, you know, not doing shit. And then Ilias steps up and goes, you know what? Fuck Dementors, I know the spell's gonna take these out. And he casts his Patronus, and out pops a little mouse. And the story goes that the villagers stopped what they were doing, which if you remember was panicking, to laugh at this mouse, as Elise is like, no, I've got this, lads, I've got this. And even the part of the dark was attacking the village, was like, what is like a pathetic Patronus like, gonna do against my army of Dementors? And the mouse just proceeded to do the sickest 400 hit combo you have ever seen on those Dementors dick holes. And apparently Ilias was just so pure of heart that his mouse shone so brightly and fought with such ferocity that just all the Dementors ran away. And I'm imagining that scene in Monty Python and the Holy Grail where they go, oh, there's the most dangerous creature in the land and it's a fucking rabbit and they all laugh at it and they go, oh, just tears throats out. Just, I imagine the mouse just doing that. So Ilias defeats the Dementors. Yes, they all get their shit rocked by that little mouse. And the story goes that the dark wizard attacking the village gets so pissed off that he tries to cast his own Patronus. You know, it's like potentially you know, scare the Dementors back to attacking the village. But because he's a dark wizard, who has like an evil heart and he has no goodness in him, instead of summoning Patronus, his one shoots out like thousands of maggots that then eat me alive. And I'm now annoyed that that's not how the Harry Potter series ended. Because I would have loved to see just like a CGI Ralph Fiennes just get eaten by thousands of maggots. <laughs> Do you know what I've not asked in a while, Brad? How are you doing? I'm all right. Are you enjoying this YouTuber lifestyle? Like, you know, I'm drinking at two in the afternoon on a Thursday. How's that sitting with you? Sitting it's, pretty it's, well. Yeah. I'm fucking loving it. It's great. We're, we're studio trying to think of something to talk about, but we're studio drinking. At two in the afternoon, when most people are at work, I feel for you guys, I've been there. Oh. So people want, because this comes out, it's, uh, four, it'll be 4pm Friday our time, which is yes. when people will be coming out of work. Pretty much, but yeah. eight hour, seven or eight hours back in the US, where like 50% of the audience is, yeah. they're like starting work. Oh God, that's the roughest, so people, this, this is going to come live and people are like, got ready to go to work. Yeah, that must be like... I've never thought about it until you mentioned it just then. That that must be really fucking, like, you know, like, demoralising. So those people continue fighting the good fight and fuck the man. Yeah. Hell fucking yeah. I say on the biggest video platform in the world, like, run by one of the largest companies on Earth. Oh, God. I'm trying, I'm trying. Uh, you know what, though? We are fighting our own way because we keep getting videos demonetised and that shit's bullshit. I don't like that. Like, a video where we put, like, all we did is have, like, a six-second clip where a guy's wang is clearly visible, swinging from side to side, and that got demonetised. If people don't know what we're talking about, um, we've released a video a couple of days ago now, but for couple, maybe a week or so ago for people watching, where we just have, like, a clip from Conan, the video game, where it's just a guy running around with a giant swinging dong. What people need to know is that, when I saw that YouTuber said, this video is not suitable for advertisers, I clicked on, apply for manual review. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, I, I'm glad that someone from YouTube had to watch that shit and they confirmed via manual review that is not suitable for advertisers. And you know what? Fuck those advertisers. They don't want to advertise in a video with a big swinging Conan dong. What's that about? I just thought to myself, it's actually been a while since I've shown you a video for a reaction to video, so I'm going to find that clip. No, no, put Doggo Force on again. <laughs> just do that. No, so if you do it to a Doggo Force, you'll, no, put you'll Doggo become Force a... on again. Doggo Force is great. For God's sake. You're putting Doggo Force. Yeah, Doggo Force! The challenge is no laughing. Oh, this is an... oh we're doing a no laugh challenge. You're no laugh okay. challenge. Yeah, we've no... never done one before. No laugh challenge. No laugh Doggo. challenge. Let me just rotate the TV a bit more so that you've got a better view. I can already see it. Oh, there we go. I want to take a drink. Ah, okay, so get ready. tell me when you're ready, when you can pause. Okay. Hopefully there's actually going to be sound. <sighs> okay, I'm ready. <laughs> you feel already? Stop it. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> no, no. <laughs> Again. Okay. <laughs> you ready? You have so much control over me, doggo force. Oh, if I ever have to fight a dementor, I'm thinking about that.